CIG TV News Update. I'm April Cummings in for Donna Bush. In our top story, following the grand court decision to delay the referendum, the elections office pauses its preparations for the people-initiated vote on the port. Election Supervisor Wesley Howell says all postal ballot requests received to date that have not yet been issued will be held securely, pending further developments from the grand court. Completed postal ballots that have been received or are in the process of being returned to the elections office will also be kept securely. And all other activities relating to the referendum, such as mobile voting are also suspended. Additional guidance will be issued by the Elections Office as legal matters proceed through the Grand Court. Elsewhere, the Public Health Department this morning offered free flu shots to civil servants. The Ministry of Health partnered with Public Health to provide vaccinations to workers, including Deputy Governor the Honorable Franz Manderson at the Government Administration Building. Nurse Manager responsible for primary health care services, Joanna Rose Wright, explains that Public Health has been offering the flu shot in workplaces since the season began. We are administering flu vaccines to the staff. We have been doing this since October, going to other companies, going to supermarkets and also at all the health centers. We have been, we have, so far we have done close to 3,000 doses of the flu vaccines. The uptake is really good this year. Ms. Rose Wright says the flu shot is particularly recommended for those in certain vulnerable sections of our population. It is very important, especially for persons who have uh, challenges with low immune systems, persons with diabetes, persons with cancer, children, elderly, caregivers who, you know, they care for either elderly or working at preschools. It is important for them to protect themselves so that they will not have this to pass on to somebody else. And also it reduces the number of absenteeism from work. The 2019-2020 flu shot is currently available at the following venues. The General Practice Clinic at the Cayman Islands Hospital and all district health centers from 2 to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. Faith Hospital in Cayman Brack and the Little Cayman Clinic. Flu shots are provided on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. And there has been higher than usual demand reported this year. The protocol office last night showed its appreciation to everyone who contributes to the staging of national events throughout the year. The office, which organizes National Heroes Day, the Queen's Birthday and Remembrance Day, recognized civil servants, volunteers and all who contribute to the pomp and pageantry of these occasions. Cabinet Secretary Samuel Rose also gave a thank you to Radio Cayman, Government Information Services and the Public Works Department. He ended by expressing his gratitude to the evening's host, among others. We want to say a huge thank you to His Excellency the Governor and Mrs. Roper and the staff here at Government House and Ms. Jacqueline for ensuring that we can have this beautiful event tonight. This is my favorite time of year. You see all the beautiful Christmas lights, that sweet Christmas breeze. So thank you for hosting us. And I know that the contingents feel so special being here tonight at Government House. It makes you know how much you are appreciated by, by all of us in the public service. The protocol office has already begun its preparations for National Heroes Day in January 2020. Now a look at some of the stories making headlines from the Radio Cayman newsroom. Following another successful audit by the American Association for Laboratory Accreditation, the Water Authority's accreditation has been extended through November 2021. The lab's accreditation was also expanded to ensure reliable testing of corrosion-related parameters in drinking water, specifically iron, copper, lead, and zinc. In addition, the lab is now accredited to test hydrogen sulfide in the air. Also, Caribbean Airlines announces the start of its new service between Kingston and Grand Cayman. On Tuesday, December 17th, the flights will operate twice weekly on Tuesday and Saturday. The carrier says the route is in keeping with its mission to connect the Caribbean. And in our final segment today, the Cayman Compass recaps the winning moments of this year's Cayman Islands NC2A Classic Final when the George Mason Patriots beat the New Mexico Aggies 68-64. Sarah and have some uh, fun with the team, jet skiing and paddle boarding and snorkeling and some of that stuff. This is a great venue. Like for, for a classic like this, this gym is the perfect size and it was loud.
our program around toughness and rebounding and defense, and uh, we're just not there yet with this group. You know, I thought maybe we were trending in that direction. And this was going to be an opportunity for us to prove it, to win three games in three days against a good team. But unfortunately, in the end, um, they just made more plays and a little tougher than we were. Um, my teammates put me in this position, to be honest with you. Um, trusting them, trusting me with the ball as far as post ups and things like that. Um, them helping me just keeping myself going, um, even when I feel down personally or like things aren't going my way. All my teammates across the board just keep going, keep doing what you're doing, like you're one of our eight. For more daily news headlines, you can visit radiokman.gov.ky and visit Cayman Compass online. Let's take a look now at the weather forecast for our area from the Cayman Islands National Weather Service. The forecast calls for light to moderate northerly winds and moderate seas over the next 24 hours as a weak cold front enters the Cayman area this afternoon. Radar images are showing no showers within the Cayman area. The Wednesday evening forecast calls for fair skies with less than a 20% chance of showers with temperatures falling to the low 70s. Winds north to northeast at 10 to 15 knots and seas slight to moderate with wave heights of 2 to 4 feet. We encourage you to go online to weather.gov.ky for the latest forecast, which you can also find on their Facebook page and on Weather Radio Dial 107.9 FM. And don't forget you can also download the National Weather Service's app CINWS to get the latest weather information at your fingertips. That is the latest from us here at CID Television. To see what's on our program schedule, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and click on the publications icon at the bottom of the page. And don't forget you can always watch our news updates online as well. I'm April Cummings. Thanks for joining us. The Royal Cayman Islands Police Service has launched a new service to apply for a police clearance certificate online. To make this process quick and easy, ensure you have digital copies of all required documents readily available. At a minimum, you'll need a copy of your passport photo page. Our website lists the full requirements. If you are using an Apple iOS or Android mobile device, you can use the camera to take photos of these documents while completing your application. After you have read the instructions and are ready to start, Type in the alphanumeric string from the CAPTCHA image and click the green button that says Start Application. If you can't read the letters and numbers properly, click Can't Read Image below the photo to try again. To complete your application, you will follow five simple steps. These are shown at the top of each page, and the blue circle will always show where you are right now. Enter the requested data in each field. All fields marked with an asterisk are required. Each field has some help information and please pay attention to the correct format for dates and telephone numbers in particular. When selecting your birthday, you can also use the calendar feature. If a field has a drop-down list, you can scroll through alphabetically or start typing to find the correct option. You will be asked to enter your email address twice to ensure it's correct. This is the address we will use to send you a confirmation email and receipt. Once you have entered all of the required information, click Next at the bottom of the screen. If you click the Cancel Application button at any stage in the process, you will lose everything you've entered so far and be returned to the home page. On this page, answer the questions about past offenses, provide details if relevant, and then click Next. In this step, you will select the type of service being requested and details of the person applying, as well as anyone who might pick up the certificate on his or her behalf. If you select certain options, more information may be required at this stage or later in the process when you are uploading your documents. Finally, select the reasons you are applying and then click Next. If you make a mistake, 
use the drop-down menu to change the reason, or click the red X to delete a line. Remember, if you click the Cancel Application button at any stage in the process, you will lose everything you've entered so far and be returned to the home page. If you need to go back to a previous page to review or change data you already entered, you can use the Back button. You can also navigate through the process using the links at the top of the page. On this page, you will be asked for the relevant digital documents to support your application. On each line, click the Upload icon, select the correct file, and then click Upload. Repeat this process for each document. Based on the information you've already entered, this page will tell you the basic documents required. However, please remember to read the guidance notes to ensure you've included everything for your particular application. You can click the Upload More Documents button if you need to add more files, using the Comments field to briefly explain the additional documents you are submitting. If you go back to previous sections after uploading documents and make changes that affect these requirements, you may need to re-upload your documents. This is the final page before submission. Please review all information provided to ensure it is accurate and complete. You won't be able to change anything on this page, but you can use the back button or the links at the top of the page to return to earlier pages and update any field. By submitting this application, you are declaring that the information provided is accurate and truthful. If you are satisfied with your application, click Proceed to Online Payment. You may need to allow pop-ups and then click the button again to show the payment screen where you will enter your debit or credit card information. The Cayman Islands government accepts Visa and MasterCard and you can use a debit or credit card issued anywhere in the world. Payment will be processed in Cayman Islands dollars for local service and in United States dollars for overseas service. If you have questions about any exchange rate that will be used or foreign currency transaction fees, please contact the bank that issued your card. The Cayman Islands government will not receive or retain your card information. Once your online payment has been authorized, you can view and print your receipt. Click Continue to return to our webpage for details on pickup date and time. If there is an issue with your application and we have to contact you for more information, your application may be delayed. You will also receive a confirmation email with this information and your official receipt. Please remember to bring your passport for identification when you collect your certificate from the Criminal Records Office. Boating, fishing, and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities such as snorkeling and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two. These items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four, in addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five, also don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, 
Boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911. The RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all. I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the deadbolts are not able to move. If it is slightly opened, then you can push the deadbolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be pried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. The Esterly Tibbetts Highway three-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight-through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right-hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn. Did you know your mailing address details on your land register must be up to date in order to receive notices on new development which may impact you? Visit Lands and Survey Department to check your mailing address is correct. 